I just found out seven days ago that I have AFib. Hey guys, Mark McKillier with Live Anabolic, and today I was supposed to give you a belly fat burning workout that you do right at home with no special equipment. Matter of fact, I had it all laid out. Six exercises, we were going to do them back to back in circuit style, which creates basically an epoch effect. So when you do them like that, it's, it's a hit workout. And you know, you're gasping for breath, but at the end of each circuit, you stop and give yourself a couple minutes to catch your breath and you do it all over again. It's a great way to burn fat, guys, because it elevates your metabolic rate long after the workout's over. So it's much more efficient than going out and jogging for half an hour, okay? Because you can get a lot done in a hit work in 10 minutes, but guess what I just told you? I called an audible. I was supposed to do it, but I'm not gonna do it. Instead, I'm gonna give you an update about a health issue that just arose with me. I just found out about it last week, so it makes, it, makes doing HIT workouts almost impossible. Okay, so this is gonna be interesting. I want you to stick around, not just because I want you, because I want to talk about myself, but this is something that affects a lot of men, and it's, it's serious. But before I get to that, remember guys, we got a fantastic free resource. It's our Facebook group right here, okay? 20,000 guys all around the world just like you. I'm the moderator. I'm in there every day answering questions. It's a blast. It really is. Bunch of great guys. Even if you don't like Facebook, I don't care. Create an account and just join. Click the link below, okay, this video, and it'll take you there. Um, you don't have to use your real name. You don't have to post any pictures of yourself. You can be anonymous, but there's a lot of great information in our group, okay? And it's not just me. It's everybody else posting and asking questions and answering each other's questions and it's nutrition related and it's injury related. We got, we talk about everything in there. So trust me, you won't regret it. Join our Facebook group. So why the heck did I call an audible and decide not to do today's video? The video that my boss wanted me to do a high intensity interval training workout, a workout designed to really push you, push you guys really hard so that it creates an epoch effect and you burn a ton of calories even after the workout's over. Well, guess what? I just found out seven days ago that I have AFib. <laughs> and so let me talk about it real quick. Not because I really want to talk about myself. It's, it's not that exciting, but I think it's important for you guys to know what the symptoms are and to know that if somebody like me, I'm pretty healthy. I, I exercise a lot. I eat pretty well and I came down with it. Um, and so I didn't know anything about it until seven days ago. So here we go. Let's, let's just discuss how I found out about it because some of you guys might have it and not know it because I think I've had it for probably a year and a half and I didn't know it until a week ago. And so this is what happened. About a year and a half ago, I got a bad case of COVID, a uh, bad, severe case, um, it took me weeks to recover. I couldn't shoot a single video for six weeks because it screwed up my vocal cords so bad due to the sore throat. So I probably didn't go to the gym or work out for at least a month. When I finally went back to the gym, I was gasping for breath. Well, I figured it was COVID. Well, I was never able to fully recover. I was never able to go back and really jog and run, do cardio, do, do you know, high intensity interval type workouts like I used to. And I really couldn't figure out why. And it just kind of went on and on and you just get used to it. So I was so used to being out of breath all the time that I didn't notice it anymore. Okay. It was just the norm, right? Okay. Well, two weeks ago, I go to Colorado, the mountains, all right, to play golf with my butt, with my brother and two other friends. Well, my brother is telling me, it, Mark, you're constantly gasping for breath when you're sleeping at night, when we're on the golf course, when we're doing a little simple hike. You know, I was having a hard time keeping up with the other guys who don't exercise much. And um, I didn't really, you know, pay attention to it, but he said, it's, it, it's noticeable. He said, you need to see a doc. So guess what? <laughs> a week later, I go into my doc and say, hey, I'm out of breath all the time. And they do an EKG, and let me tell you, an EKG takes about 10 seconds. They stick some, some um, elect, electrodes on you, several places, 
hit the button, 10 seconds later, they're done. They walk back in and go, oh yeah, you have AFib. <laughs> I mean, it's that fast. So here I am with AFib now talking to you guys about it. So pay attention, listen to your body. I thought I was listening to my body. I thought there was a, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get back into my kind of normal cardio conditioning that I like to do, you know, every summer or for six months out of the year during the six warm months. Um, I just was assuming, you know, it was age or something, but that's not true. You shouldn't, I shouldn't age out of condition, especially cardio condition. Um, and so that's all it was. Matter of fact, my cameraman who shoots all these videos for me, uh, was telling me just a few days ago or last week, I should say, we were shooting a video on how to do push-ups. And he was like, Mark, you know, you're out of breath, you know, while you're talking <laughs> and it's just doing a, you know, a handful of push-ups. So I didn't even notice it, all right? But other people were noticing me having a hard time breathing. And so take that for what it's worth, guys. Um, you may have AFib like I did, did and not know it, all right? So those are some of the symptoms. I was, I was tired and sluggish. I didn't have enough energy. Um, you know, so that's why I went to the doctor. I wanted to do a complete, you know, a bunch of blood work. Uh, see if there was something wrong with my hormones. You know, all the blood work was pretty darn good. They were pretty happy with that. But, you know, they they did an EKG, which is super simple. It takes two, three minutes, and man, it, it found it immediately. All right, so I don't want this video to get crazy boring on you guys. <laughs> I know just watching me sit here and talk to the camera might might turn some of you guys off. But, but, but um, if you're concerned about your health, if you're low on energy, okay, if you if you feel like it's, it's harder to do cardio type workouts than it should be if you're having a hard time catching your breath. Um, just doing kind of relatively simple things, you know, this could be an issue and it's really easy and quick to test for. So what have we done in the seven days since I got diagnosed with AFib? Well, they immediately put me on blood thinners. Um, and I've been on them for a week now. I don't feel any different at all, but, but, um, the doctor said the reason we're putting you on blood thinners is to help prevent strokes. And I don't know all the ins and outs, but right now they think, and I'll tell you about some of these other tests I've done, that my heart is actually physically in very good shape. But AFib is an electrical issue. It has to do with the electrical impulses that trigger the different chambers in your heart to pump. Okay. So anyway, that's the good news. All right. So I'm on blood thinners. My doc says, whatever you do, don't get in a severe car wreck. You might bleed to death. I said, I'll do my best. Um, and then I've, you know, they've, they've lined me up for several tests. So the EKG was simple. Uh, I did a CAT scan with calcium or something. Anyway, that's super simple. It takes about five minutes. Um, I think they're looking for calcium buildup or hardening of the arteries or something like that in, in my heart. It was negative. Everything was in great shape. Um, Today, earlier today, I actually did an echocardiogram, which is basically like, like an ultrasound for, for babies. So they just put this stuff on your heart, you know, and they just sit there and they look at it and it takes about 30 minutes. Uh, and they're basically using sound waves to bounce off your heart so they can see inside your heart, all the valves. It's pretty wild. Um, and that test has already come back. I mean, it was done earlier today and everything looks A-OK. -okay. So physically, my heart's really good. Uh, another five weeks from now, I'm doing a stress test. I think that's the last thing you do. Um, you know, a stress test is when you're walking on a treadmill and they keep increasing the incline until you just can't go anymore and you have to stop. And they, they got you hooked up to all this, all these heart monitors and everything. Um, and so that's the last of all the tests. And um, so ultimately, fingers crossed, and you guys, several of you guys, I'm sure have already done all this stuff. So you, you're, you're experts. I'm just kind of learning. Ultimately, hopefully in a couple months, they will stick a wire up an artery, or is it a vein, <laughs> in my leg and go all the way up to my heart and zap, you know, the, the area in my heart that's causing the irregular heartbeat and hopefully get that electrical issue taken care of. And I think sometimes it's just an electrical zap. Sometimes they actually burn some tissue. And I think it depends on, you know, all kinds of things that I don't know about right now. But hopefully 
once they do that, it gets rid of the electrical problems in your heart. It gets rid of the AFib, so to speak, and you're just back to normal. So the heart, the physical muscles of the heart, the chambers, the, the arteries, um, the veins are all looking good right now. It's just this irregular beat thing that's causing me to not get enough blood flow through my system and hence I don't get enough oxygen to my muscles and that's why I'm out of breath. So hopefully in a couple months uh, we get that little, It's I think it's a pretty minor surgery. Um, uh, I think you do that and then boom, I think you just go back to normal and get off the blood thinners and right now the doc says, hey, don't worry about it. Keep exercising. I'm still going to the gym and I try to run, do some, do some cardio, but man, I can't go far and I can't go fast. It's really embarrassing. So that's why I didn't do the scheduled workout today. A high intensity interval training is, would kick my butt. And even if I could get through it, I really wouldn't be able to talk to you guys about what I'm doing. I'd have to like cut the camera, catch my breath, and then start talking. So that may be how I have to do any hit style workout for the next couple of months until I get this taken care of. So that's the scoop, guys. Listen to your body. I thought I was, but I was so used to it, to this problem, that I didn't notice it. And it took other people being around me, all right, to tell me I need to get my ass in to see the doctor. So how do I always finish these things? Stick with it and never give up on yourself.